On March 30th, 1902, the west side of Evansville awoke to a fire, a fire so great that it illuminated much of the Franklin Street neighborhood through the dark night. The largest church on the west side was burning. The next day, Easter morning, parishioners of St. Boniface Catholic Church would find only the charred remains of their beautiful house of worship. In the late 1800s, many immigrants were drawn to the west side of Evansville, which was home to many new industries. Furniture factories, textile mills, and coal mines all provided employment opportunities for European settlers. Most of these new residents were Germans, and many of them were Catholic. In 1880, the fourth parish was created by Bishop Chatard to provide spiritual support for the many potential parishioners on Evansville's west side. The developing church needed a name, and St. Boniface, who brought Christianity to all of Germany and planted the Catholic faith in Western Europe, was chosen as a fitting namesake. With a new parish created, the only thing left to do was to find a place for the faithful to meet. Charles Schulte, Henry Reitman, Adam Helfrich, Theodore Recton, and August Rosenberger met in Mr. Schulte's home in January of 1880 to discuss the location and construction of the church. The five founding fathers purchased a lot on Wabash Avenue for $5,000, an ideal location in the heart of the German community. A temporary frame structure housed mass until the permanent church could be completed. The cornerstone was laid on September 4th in grand ceremony led by Father Roman Weinsaffel. Thousands of Catholics around Evansville were in attendance to watch the ceremony. The event was so grand that over a thousand people with no relation to the Catholic community came to witness. Following the sermons, the celebration continued with Schulte's band marching several miles towards St. Mary's Church. After the cornerstone was laid, the rest of the church was rapidly built, finishing on April 27, 1882. The 202-foot twin spires, which held the bells of the church, dominated the skyline of the west side. With a number of dedicated parishioners attending services in the temporary church, there was soon talk of also starting a school. In the spring of 1881, Adam Helfrich built a small building to accommodate the original 175 students enrolled. After only four years, the school became too small for the burgeoning population and a new school was built. The new school was located next to the church facing Walpash Avenue. It was used until 1923 when yet another larger building was erected on the corner of 10th Avenue and Michigan Street. This school is still in use today. For over 20 years, St. Boniface Church acted as a spiritual home to the Evansville West Side German Catholics. In 1902, on the eve of the Easter celebration, much work was done to prepare the sanctuary. Flowers and other decorations were used to embellish the church. On Saturday, March 29th, in the middle of the night, a lightning storm came through the tri-state. At approximately 11.30 p.m., a bolt struck the roof of the church. This bolt started a small blaze which grew as the night went on. August Rosenberger, one of the founding fathers of St. Boniface, spotted the flame from his home across the street. He took no notice, thinking it was simply a chimney fire. He was awakened again in the middle of the night to the sounds of Number 7 Fire Company rushing to the scene. Soon, Company Number 3 also arrived. After an hour of immense fighting, the firemen sent a general alarm which called for the aid of all the companies in the city. When they arrived, it was already too late for the church. All they could do was prevent the fire from reaching the nearby buildings. Hundreds of people stood by as their hearts sank watching the front doors fall, revealing the burning interior. Mm. Evansville's German language newspaper, The Democrat, described the scene this way. The hearts of the thousands of spectators gathered to see the grandiose show, namely the members of St. Boniface Parish, must have bled at the sight of the destruction which the terrible fire had brought on their beautiful church. Like greedy beasts of prey, the flames leapt onto the splendid paintings up to the richly carved and magnificently decorated altars. The carefully painted windows were either rattled or busted by the terrible heat generated by the fire or hurled into the sea of flames by the powerful streams of water. The next morning, the bells were silent as the congregation met at Sacred Heart Church nearby for a special service. During the service, they took time to praise the fire stations that attempted to extinguish the fire. After the service, hundreds of people met at the ruins in remembrance of the beautiful church where they had once worshipped. Very soon after this incident, 
plans were arranged to reconstruct the once magnificent church. It was initially thought that they had a $50,000 insurance policy for the church. It was soon discovered that the church was only insured for $10,000. The congregation set out to rebuild the church, raising money and finding labor to start right away. The walls of the vast structure were standing, but badly damaged. Despite the damage, some of the original walls were used in the rebuilding. When the roof was reconstructed, gables were added above three windows on each side of the church, and towers were lowered from 202 feet to 175 feet. Total costs were $62,000. The old church had employed gas lights, but the new church utilized new technology with a massive chandelier of solid brass containing 155 light bulbs. Special carpenters were responsible for the construction of the tall steeples. The steeple carpenters caused something of a stir. The Courier headline announced, Men building towers for St. Boniface Church in danger of death every moment they are at work. New bells were placed in one of the towers, and the brass of the fire-damaged originals were used to make rings as souvenirs of the fire. The new church was finished by June of 1903 with much help from the community. The congregation was finally able to return to the church they had formerly worshipped in. St. Boniface once again became the home to the Westside German Catholics. Through the years, there has been much work done to restore and maintain the church. In 1979, the 60-foot sanctuary was professionally repainted and the oak pews refinished. The enormous brass chandelier was lowered and hand-polished by the parishioners. Other restorations, including recovering the kneelers and repainting the statues. In more recent years, a grand fundraising campaign was conducted to raise money for the replacement of the 100-year-old roof. The slate roof over the church and the copper on the steeples were replaced, making the church look as it did in 1903. For over 125 years, St. Boniface's twin spires have dominated the west side skyline. This resilient church has been a home for the thousands of parishioners through the decades. If not for the dedication and perseverance of its members, this dominant structure would have just been a memory in the early 20th century.